Hello there, I'm stood with Marcus from MPLA Airguns UK. We're here at the Northern Shooting Show and it's very busy and it's a very big pleasure to meet Marcos and I wish him well with his channel. Chegamos na área de ar comprimido, The Stage. Aqui, nosso amigo Hello, I'm Tony Bielas from Daystate MTC and Brocock Rifles and I'm here with Marcus from MPLA Air Guns UK. Okay, so this is a Wolverine 2. Uh, came out uh, earlier this year facing the standard Wolverine and it's a faceless, it's an upgrade of the original gun. What we've done is cosmetically you can see this new stock, this new finger style, grooves on here, a new filler cover, slightly tidier design with magnets inside, tidies it up under there and an adjustable butt pad on the bottom, something that people wanted on this rifle. We can go left and right as well as up and down. Uh, what you can't see is the detailed improvements inside the rifle, which is a new valve assembly, a new core valve style, which has been basically borrowed from the Pulsar and Renegade rifles, which has been included in the Wolverine 2, and a few other styling details into the breech block, just to bring it up to date after three years of sterling service. And what I'm here to show you now is the Brocock series of rifles. Now, the, the group bought Brocock uh, a couple of years ago and we've been developing and working on the guns ever since. And there's a lot of really good stuff going on. A very simple range of guns. We started off with an air cylinder version over here called the Compatto, which is Italian for compact. Well, those are British made guns made in the United Kingdom. And it's a, what they call a semi bullpup. So we put the action back in the stock to shorten it by you know quite a bit and then we pull the forward, scope forward reaching it forward so we still get decent eye relief. It's a synthetic stock, Picatinny bipod, beautiful two-stage trigger and a very handy small little rifle. This fits perfectly into the shoulder. On the back of that rifle an adjustable butt pad just to make things nice and tidy. Then earlier this year we launched a, another version of this rifle called the Bantam and I have the Bantam here in wood and soft touch finishes and on the Bantam we're able to get a little bit more power, another 3 foot-pounds of energy so we're up to 30 foot-pounds of energy in these guns and we've got a, either a carbon fibre bottle or an aluminium fibre bottle and it adds a few pounds to the overall cost of the gun. In carbon fibre it's extremely light, very small and let's not forget that these guns have a power adjuster on them, which is low, medium and high power on the side. All multi-shot, 10 shot repeaters. There is a single shot tray coming which is available so you can shoot them in competition. And we do other versions and we're bringing out other versions all the time. So that's the Brocock, Compato and Bantam. Thank you for watching. Good afternoon, my name is Chris Horner, I'm here on behalf of Hull Cartridge Company, the official Virac importer. I'm here with Marcus from MPLA UK um, and I'm going to show you the difference between the Virac HW110 and the Virac HW100. So here first we have the HW110, it has a ballistic polymer chassis, uh, it's a 10 shot air rifle, it comes complete in the UK with a moderator, it's got a built in weaver rail and a full polymer chassis. It's got an ambidextrous beach soft touch stock. Um, the RRP for it is £645, available in 22177 from your local dealer. Here I've got a HB100T, um, 
RRP of £839. This is a 14 shot air rifle, comes with two 14 shot magazines, the sounds are standard and quick fill. In 2.2 calibre you're looking to get 140 shots and 120 in 177. Um, the, both rifles have a, a sort of match trigger system. Um, the 100 you can get with different stocks, so you can have laminate stocks, which is up here, um, the, the walnut um, and the new synthetic. Um, both rifles are regulated for optimum shot to shot consistency um, and available to order from your local dealer. Oi pessoal, estou aqui em frente ao stand da BSA. BSA Air Guns e Gamo. Eu acabei de conversar com o diretor de marketing, o John, e ele falou o seguinte: eu, ele não queria fazer nenhum vídeo a respeito da, da BSA R10 SE e também não quer que faça mais reviews sobre essa arma. Então, infelizmente, tanto Gamo quanto BSA a gente não vai conseguir falar muito sobre elas. As armas são lindas, são precisas, existem muitos reviews na internet em inglês, mas, infelizmente, em português parece que a gente não vai ter. Tá bom? Mas fiquem ligados que a gente vai ter mais novidades. Okay, I'm here with Marcus to uh, explain the differences between the JSB pellets and the pellets that are made by JSB for air arms. Um, with air arms pellets, we've had these specified particularly to shoot with air arms rifles, and these are graded to give the best accuracy that we can possibly get with our barrels. Um, over the years, we've played with different designs and this is the most accurate we can get at this present at the moment particularly with the one if you're shooting field target competitions the 177 8.5 field pellet is absolutely amazingly accurate these are a heavier version of the 2.2 pellet this is an 18 grain 0.22 caliber pellet we've also got a lighter 16 grain version of that pellet the hunter pellet is a pointed version of that pellet and these ones are a 25 caliber there's only 350 in a tin but 25 caliber 25.4 grain each of these types of pellet and sizes of pellet work incredibly well in air arms guns and although the exact pellet is also in a very very good product and we wouldn't we wouldn't stop people from buying those in fact we sell those as well but the ones we recommend are the ones that are graded and tested with air arms barrels and that's these pellets here. Okay. He's talking about that movement there. Correct, he's when he brings the trigger back. Yes. It gets to that position and he wants it where it yeah. fires and there's minimal amount of movement. Yeah. yeah. Well, apart from those two screws, if you adjust those two screws, basically winding them out so that when the trigger breaks, it, the trigger blade is in, in a further the, the trigger blade would break say there and that would reduce the movement after the trigger is fired but you, you need to adjust both of those two screws unscrew it turning them anti-clockwise and you'd still get the same trigger release but instead of the trigger breaking there where the, that on that second stage it would break the trigger say back there somewhere so after it fired there would be a, a, sm a reduced amount of movement after the trigger fires. That's one thing he could do. And in some respects, that might suit him because depending on the size of his hands, and, the, and the, this is quite a long pull from the pistol grip to the trigger, it's quite long. So he might prefer it where he has that part of his finger um, pulling straight back through the action. So a lot of people move this trigger further back so that he can almost sort of get that part of their finger horizontal or something perpendicular to the action. I see. Okay. Um, what I've done if I've taken wood, where you cut down there or you, if you cut through here, you take some wood away, you can get veneer, which is a very, very thin um, 
like a walnut veneer, yeah. thin piece of wood, and glue it to the onto the cheek, the underside of the cheek piece, and on the stock, so that when the, when it's separated, it looks nice, and it takes up a little bit of the gap. Yeah. Um, and then just put uh, rods to hold it in place. So people do uh, sort of homemade modification or have a someone who's good with wood. Yeah. And, and what is what is the best option? Cutting straight. Uh, I, Here I, or, or doing all the contour? I think you need to do it slightly thicker. That's not that's not deep enough, in my opinion. You could get away with it, but it's it's uh, pretty pretty thin. But it would look if you had to do the saw cut right in here at this point, it would look that would be a very very sharp edge where that where that came. So I'm not sure you could do it. But if you did something, let's say um, on this stuff where it went down along. Yeah, I mean, you've got to retain enough wood here for strength. Yeah, yeah. So, on like the... trying to do this contour. That would be very, 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 very difficult to do. Yeah. I think you might end up having to go through part of this cheap piece. Ah, uh, I see. Um, but it's easier on the walnut stock, if it's got a walnut stock, because you can remove some of the wood and stain it and come back to the original finish. Oh. But if it's a beach stock, like this one, it's very difficult to match this, 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 this finish. So, yeah. You, if you end up making a mistake, or you wanted, say, you, you wanted to sand some of this wood away to uh, to make the cheap piece look good, I see. it could look terrible. And the other thing, you, you you don't have to do it where it goes straight through like that. You don't, you know, it doesn't need to be um, uh, horizontal. Uh, yeah. You can do it where you can, when you cut it, you can cut yeah, it you can at cut an, an angle. angle. Yeah. And then when you look at the stock, you don't see through the gaps. I easily. see. I see. Nice. Nice advice. Oi pessoal, é, queria mostrar essa arma aqui para vocês. A marca dela é Zbroya. É uma marca da Ucrânia, ok? Tem a versão Bullpup e a versão Carabina, chamada Hortizia. Essa marca é uma marca que está chegando aqui na Inglaterra agora. Olha a arma que bonita. Check piece. Uma madeira laminada com um toque muito bom. Side lever. Ok? Muito facinho também. Magazine rotativo de 12 tiros. Feita na Ucrânia. Aqui. A trava, ok? Gatilho, virar ela para frente. Acionado, voltou. Bem silenciosa. Bastante bem acabada a arma. Oi pessoal, estamos chegando aqui ao final desse vídeo, é, a feira está acabando, Northern Shooting Show, segundo maior evento de, de tiro esportivo, caça é, do Reino Unido, uma feira de primeiríssima qualidade, importante, é, fiz contato com vários 
possíveis patrocinadores, parceiros. Temos novidades aí para o canal e eu espero que vocês tenham gostado. E se gostou, compartilhe esse vídeo, é importante a gente ser conhecido, tornar esse canal grande, tornar esse canal forte para que as empresas nos vejam, vejam o mercado brasileiro. Eu conversei com muita gente aqui que não conhece o mercado brasileiro, não sabe o quanto de arma a gente compra, não sabe o quanto eles vendem para o Brasil em termos de armas, de lunetas e outros equipamentos. Então é importante a gente tornar esse canal grande, conhecido e eu quero fazer isso para vocês. Então, por favor, compartilha, é, se inscreva no canal e, se possível, né, dá o, o joinha aí, né, dá um like, que vai ajudar bastante, tá bom? Não peço muita coisa, não. Simplesmente divulga, compartilha o canal, é, mostra para os seus amigos, fala sobre a gente e a gente vai trazer muitas novidades ainda para vocês. Tá certo? Forte abraço, fiquem com Deus e bons tiros!